Hi, my name is Arexi Pukanikin, and we're balling today, tomorrow, and most definitely yesterday. At what cost? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Ballin' At What Cost. We're out here in the summer cottage of my best boy, Eric, and we're just chilling where it's a little bit later in the evening. We I just came back from island camping yesterday. You know, no big deal. It was amazing. The nature was beautiful, to say the least. The colors were amazing. The sunset was amazing. Um, you know, and then we're, we made it back. By the skin of our teeth, you know, it started fucking rainstorming. We we somehow escaped the rainstorm, and then the 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 boat that we were riding on out on was uh, almost ran out of fuel. But it took us all the way still back back to dry land, and uh, yeah, we're here a little bit tired, but balling at what cost? We keep on balling, no matter the cost. So let's start off with um. Start off with a little bit of news from last week, all right? So, the biggest news, absolutely the most humongous piece of news in the sports competition <laughs> world is uh, the Michael Jordan of Glizzy's, the, the legend of Glizzy's, Joey Chestnut, has been banned from the Nathan's 4th of July hot dog eating competition. Um, If you didn't know why I have to make a... This is the Michael Jordan of glizzy eating, ladies and gentlemen. This is the real deal, okay? Because if anyone's the Michael Jordan of any competition, you you gotta respect the game, okay? You gotta respect the game. And Joey Chestnut... He's definitely got game, okay? Uh, But unfortunately, after 19 years competing and dominating, um, he's been banned uh, due to a sponsorship deal with a plant-based glizzy company. You know, usually I would understand Nathan's point of view because it is really like a sponsorship thingy. Like, I understand that because in a way... You come into the competition, you'd be, you know, it's just a, it's a business thing. I understand that usually, right? Usually most cases I take Nathan's side. Okay. Whoever the fuck Nathan is, I'm sure he's great at making a lot of hot dogs or a lot of glizzies, but, but we're talking about vegan glizzies. Okay. And we're talking about glizzies in general, guys. Glizzies are pretty darn processed, (laughs) okay? I don't really think it matters that much if it's plant-based or if it's a real freaking meat glizzy, okay? So, sorry, I have to side with uh, Joey Chestnut here because at the end of the day, Joey Chestnut equals Michael Jordan in the the glizzy eating world. So, you you can't lose him. And it's already been confirmed that i think netflix is gonna do their own kind of hot dog eating competition now with joey chestnut and the the other runner-up champion um also the i don't know the freaking who was like on par with michael jordan but kind of like a rival yeah larry bird yeah let's just say the larry bird of freaking the <laughs> the Larry Bird of also glizzy eating Kobayashi was his name. Yeah, they're going against each other. And Netflix probably gonna make more money there. So Nathan, uh, I don't know. I think it doesn't really matter. I hope. I think the main point is that we're celebrating freedom, bitch. Okay, it's Fourth of July. Okay, glizzies equals freedom. Okay, plant based or me, it doesn't even matter. But glizzies equals freedom. Um, Joey Chestnut equals Michael Jordan. It's must see TV. Um, I hope one day they'll be able to reconcile. But that's the breaking news coming out of last week. Um, also, during the weekend, we had Gervonta Davis uh, going against. 
some guy that I don't really, some Martin something. Let me search it up. Gervonta Davis. And he just went against Frank Martin. Uh, and he retained the WBA title with this beautiful KO. I mean, this guy is freaking sensational. This guy is so scary. I mean, he's just actually a true sensation. He has like a brutal boxing technique. And he's always looking for just the flushest, 100% power on the just pitch perfect bullseye on the chin, on the jaw to put the lights out. And so I would say, given this performance, I watched the whole fight, the fucking just pure skill. I think this guy's the most entertaining boxer there is to watch. Um, Canelo is Canelo is there too, but Canelo's more of like the legend status type of deal. If we're talking about like active fighters right now, just doing their thing, like just trying to go against any killer that's put up against him. Yeah, Gervonta Davis might be that guy. This the uppercut that he swings from the pits of hell just is the most scary thing. He knows how to hit crazy body shots he just got such heavy hands for the weight class he's in so dude i'm just saying he's just like a lighter mike tyson honestly that's how it looks like he's just got a kind of like that killer boxing style so gervonta davis ko win uh backflips with the freaking chrome hearts boxing outfit i mean it just goes hard i mean this guy just understands how to be as cool as fucking possible, I guess, man. Gervonta Davis, Gervonta Tank Davis, shout out to you, man. Um, you are active and you're performing. Conor McGregor, you are not active and you're not performing. What the f Oh, dear Lord. Oh, my God. Yeah, so I, I think I might have just jinxed it like I always do. I say, hey, oh, my God, it's all building up to something this month of June. Oh, my God, how excited are you? It's amazing. What? Conor McGregor was like the big freaking name that I was waiting for for a very long time. And so will my, so was Michael Chandler. Michael Chandler has now been waiting for pretty much two years trying to fight mcgregor in the octagon so michael chandler is fucking down bad right now he's going through it ladies and gentlemen he actually he's going through it so much he might eat fucking white toast bro <laughs> you know because he doesn't eat carbs he's like super fucking ripped all the time yeah he might be so damn he's gonna fucking make himself a white bread sandwich that's how goddamn down bad michael chandler is right now and I mean, hopefully, it was because of Mike Gregor. He he was injured, and he did not get medically cleared. I'm sure there was a hell of a lot more details behind the scenes. But, yeah, we'll just... we got to hope for the best. I still think Michael Chandler's just going to keep on waiting. Um, and McGregor... I think the fact that this was the first time, in a way, that he, he's pulled out... I think he's pretty eager to just get as healthy as possible and get back to the octagon. And if anything, this is only going to make the fight bigger whenever it does happen. So hopefully matchup will still happen at the end of the year. Hopefully Michael Chandler doesn't have to go back to resort to eating fucking bread again. So, <laughs> oh my God, he just wants the Conor McGregor bread, but he don't want to eat the bread. You know what I'm saying? That's just how it is. So the UFC, the ultimate show must go on, okay? McGregor being out, oh, brother. I wish that was the only devastating fucking news coming out of the UFC. However, there's UFC fight night in Saudi Arabia, in Riyadh, I think, this, this weekend. And originally, 
it was supposed to be Robert Whitaker going against Hamza Chimaev uh, for the main event. However, unfortunately, Hamza Chimaev is ill, is very sick right now. He has the physical abilities. His muscles are fucking, you know, straight out of a fucking science lab. But his immune system is definitely not. I mean, remember, COVID almost fucking killed this man. Now he's, I swear, he probably just got like a fucking little cold and then just a whole system shuts down. I wouldn't be surprised also. It's just how hard he goes during training. But that's another fucking topic. But yeah, Kamzat Chimaev is out because of an illness. And uh, Robert Whitaker, therefore, goes against... Ikram Aliskerov, um, Ikram steps in in short notice for the main event. I mean, this, in my personal opinion, was a bit of a fucking golden ticket handed to Ikram. Um, but I understand it because Ikram uh, has a pretty goddamn impressive professional MMA record of 15-1. and one, And... Although he's only fought twice in the UFC, there have been two dominant, dominant TKO KOs within the first round. Um, and it wasn't even against the worst competition either. So I truthfully think, look, I think it's going to be one of those experienced things. Of course, um, Ikram's going to be aggressive. But um, Robert Whitaker is so skillful with keeping the distance with defense and then just picking apart the opponent as well. So this is going to be a test of fight IQ more than power or, you know, technique per se. I think it's just going to be fight IQ. Whoever is smarter with the five round fight is going to be the one who comes out on top. I'll be rooting for Robert Whitaker. If you were to ask me, I think he gets a TKO within within three rounds. I think so. Um, Robert Whitaker got, got one of the most impressive gas tanks for the heavier divisions. And um, yeah, he's just so experienced and, you know, ready to get back into the win column as well because uh, I'm pretty sure last fight was against Drakus and he lost down on that one but yeah um of course Ikram you never know it's just Ikram is one of those just scary dangerous Dagestani kind of guys so at the end of the day I'm not gonna doubt him at all but it's just I feel like Robert Whitaker and just given the fact that Ikram is coming coming in short notice it's just gonna be a tough one uh, for Ikram to try to pull off so shout out to Robert Whitaker shout out to Ikram at the end of the day for taking the short notice fight um, and yeah we'll be we'll be playing pay, playing paying very close attention this weekend this Saturday as it's in Saudi Arabia I'll be able to watch the whole card without having to worry about my sleep schedule wonderful and uh, co-main let's just talk about the co-main real quick um Heavyweight bout, uh, number three, Sergey Pavlovich. Sergey Pavlovich goes against Alexander Volkov, who is ranked number five in the heavyweight division. Um, yeah, um, Mother Russia versus Mother Russia. Either way, Mother Russia <laughs> wins. <laughs> at the end of the co-main event um if volkov can keep his distance and defend takedowns then i can see a decision win uh for volkov however sergey sergey pavlovich <laughs> on the other hand is relentless built like a goddamn t90 tank so if he's close you're done you're getting evaporated bro if he gets a little bit of distance on you locks in for the takedown bam 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 ground and pound locks it in you're donezo you're donezo you're gonna get obliterated so it's gonna be very interesting both men coming off of a loss 
I think. Oh no, 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 no. Volkov pulled off a pulled off a win last time. But anyways, very, very interesting. One is thick and strong. One is long and not as strong, but just fucking quite a lot longer. Although, oh, oh my God, Sergey Pavlovich actually has the reach advantage, but not the leg reach. So exactly, Volkov very skilled with uh, his Muay Thai skills. Use use those legs to keep the distance. That's his best chance. Otherwise, Pavlovich is coming in for the takedown and ground and pound. Okay, that's the co-main event. Last last one that I do want to mention real quick. The last fight of the prelims. Uh, this guy called Shara Bullet Magomedov. Um, he's fighting for the second time in the UFC. He's going against uh, this guy called Jailton Lutterbach. Lutterbach. I don't know. UFC debut for the opponent and Shara is very he's just the reason why I'm talking about him is he's genuinely a very very exciting prospect that seems as though he has the skill that is above a lot of the fighters in the division however he's new he just has to climb the ladder slowly um but it's the it's, he's very exciting because at the end of the day he's a Dagestani fighter, but most most Dagestani fighters they're known for wrestling, right? Well, this guy don't wrestle. He strikes. He's a high level, high level Muay Thai striker. Uh, on top of the fact that he looks like a you know ginger pirate, um, I'm excited. What fashion? He will pick apart his upcoming upcoming opponent. Opponent man, it's um. And this guy looks very interesting uh, as a human, and uh, also just he is very focused, very dialed in, and he has Dagestani kickboxing Muay Thai skills. Like what? So it's just like. Isn't that even more gangster because all they teach in Dagestan is wrestling or like mostly wrestling or it's mostly about wrestling and grappling. But then this guy goes like, nah, nah, I'm going to try. I'm going to try this other thing, too. And then he gets super good at it. I mean, the first I watched his UFC debut, he was throwing some crazy kicks around, man. Some powerful, crisp kicks around. So. Keep an eye out for Shara Bullet Magomedov. Okay, he's gonna be, he's gonna be climbing the ladder slowly and slowly. Just gotta see in what fashion he does that. Okay. All right. Next up. Next up. All right. This was a little bit of what happened last week and has been happening, but now we've gone to the point where I just gotta say this. Okay. The NBA playoffs, the NBA Finals championships, the championship finals. Dallas Mavericks goes against Boston Celtics. Celtics won three in a row. Game one, two, three. Luke, they pulled one back. Now, they're going to Boston tonight for game five. It's all or nothing. It hasn't gone our way, but God damn it, we're going to give it our all to get the reverse sweep. I believe, man. I believe that. I believe it. <laughs> I believe. Okay, anyways. um, Yeah, well, uh, NHL playoffs, I haven't talked about it that much. Um, it's the championship finals as well. Stanley Cup finals. Um Edmonton Oilers are going against the Florida Panthers. Florida Panthers won game one, two, three. And now Oilers were able to get one dub on the board. So it's 3-1. And for the, for the Oilers lady out there, it hasn't gone your way, honey. But God damn it. God damn it. I'm going to give it my all. To get the reverse sweep for you. Because you deserve it, Oilers lady. I love you. 
Okay, you deserve the reverse sweep, okay? We're doing this for you. I'm doing this for you. Believe. Believe. I, can I actually do anything? No. Have I actually really talked about the NHL before? No, not really. But hey, listen to me, Edmonton Oilers lady. We're doing this for you. I'm rooting for the Oilers. For you, okay? <laughs> and to and to transition that smoothly. Um, we're going to F1 where we're getting triple head. Wait, what? <laughs> triple header? Wait, what? Yeah, triple header, three, three weekends in a row. But we start off with the Spanish uh, GP. Um, but the triple header that we have coming up is a beautiful one. And I'd almost say that this is the this is the l possibly the least exciting track out of the triple head. So it's just going to increase in quality of the circuit i don't know um excitement possible excitement but it's spain austria and great britain three weekends in a row it's about to be beautiful everybody loves loves austria everybody loves great britain spain is just the one little question mark however they've made improvements to the track after last year or before last year this is the second time with the new and improved uh spanish circuit and um it's a technical one man it's really technical with a lot of medium and slow speed turns um not too many straights i mean there's only two drs zones or is there only one drs zone i ain't gonna cap i ain't gonna cap yeah there's two drs zones um but realistically the only place you can actually pull off a like an overtake that doesn't actually have a ridiculous amount of ridiculous amount of risk is the starting straight, uh, the finish line straight. So it's very interesting. It's very, it's going to be very technical. It's going to, the results we get on the race from Sunday is going to stem a lot from how the qualifying goes. Um, and the the race itself, I honestly think it might just go down to the wire because we've seen a lot of races now in a row where it's it's gotten close. It's gotten close. The gap isn't that crazy anymore. It ain't Max Verstappen ahead by over 20 seconds no more, okay? So with that being said, a lot of tire strategies of just, you know, maybe do the undercut or the overcut, you know, just save the tires, all that stuff. And with these factors coming in, I think um, there's a lot of potential for different different drivers. I think this is going to be a big race for Norris. Um, he has the chance to win this. He has the chance to win this. Um, big one for Norris because currently he's at 131 uh, in the Drivers' Championship, which is P3. However, he's only seven points behind Charles Leclerc, and then he's about 63 points behind Max Verstappen. Realistically, is he going to catch Verstappen? Is anyone going to catch Verstappen? No, but I think Norris or Leclerc could get close. Uh, right now, I believe that Norris could get closer to Max Verstappen than Charles Leclerc. Um, because the McLaren, as of right now, is looking a little bit more promising than the Ferrari. So, with that also being said, Ferrari, they have to bounce back, man. Because um, it was a dreadful Canadian GP. I mean, neither car scored points. It was just, it was a mess. It was a mess. It was a lot of bad luck. I know... Um, but now we, we gotta, we gotta pull through. Okay. We gotta pull through. And also just the fact that Mercedes performed so well in the Canadian GP and they obviously made improvements to the car. I'm going to say this, either Sir Lewis Hamilton is going to win the Spanish Grand Prix, or it's going to be Oscar Piastri's first win 
in Formula One. I think if Oscar Piastri puts the pieces together of the difficult puzzle that is the Spanish Grand Prix circuit during qualifying on Saturday, I think Piastri has a very good chance. Same thing with Lewis Hamilton. He's been driving this track for a long time. The car has improved. I think he has the edge over George Russell, even though there's been little rumors that he's alluded to that he's saying basically they're doing a lot for George's car and they ain't doing shit for my fucking car because I'm getting out of here at the end of the year anyway. So, But I do believe Lewis Hamilton, he's going to show a bit of that fire before he goes to Ferrari. I think this just might be one of those races for him. And a very possibly, very possible, no Red Bulls on the podium. This is a very controversial take. This is saying that Verstappen might be slipping or some shit, but I don't know. Sergio Perez is obviously struggling in the Red Bull compared to the high competition of any of the top teams. So this is going to be an interesting one either way, all right? Either way, full of action during the weekend. The UFC, Formula One, and and then also throughout everything constantly, UEFA, UEFA, European Championships, alive and kicking right now. Absolutely fucking kicking right now. Um... And the whole Europe is lit. The whole entire Europe is lit. We're fucking, we're just, too, we're just enjoying ourselves. Finland ain't even in the European Championships. Whole Europe is lit. I don't care what you're saying. Um, they're lit in Germany, but they're lit in their own hometowns, too. Um, either way, it's really fun to see everyone fired up about football, fired up, fired up over one sport, trying to root for their own team, and... Um, I'm going to be following along since there's uh, games, of course, going to get, going at reasonable times. And, um, yeah, if I had to shout one, maybe Germany, maybe Netherlands for the dub. Um, but, hey, ladies and gentlemen, this is yours truly, Rexy Pukanikin. I'm going to end it off here. It's a short one. We're going to get this up and loaded into the interwebs. It's been a real one. I'm excited for this weekend. Keep on balling. I'll see you next week. Bye.